Okay, so let's continue with part 2 of our vector art preparation techniques for ray spline using ray tools, SVG, and importer. Okay, so here's an art sent by a uh, ray tools user, Keith Wilson, and it's your typical game menu with three buttons and a header line. Very simple layout. So, how do we get this inside Unity using ray tools? So, the first thing that you got to be aware of is that some transformations in standard SVG are not supported directly by Unity and we have added a number of features just to better support them but it's simply best if you expand those points into absolute positions. To do that if you use Illustrator simply by saving the file um, as an SVG um, when you save this guy and Illustrator is going to tell you transforms are expanded. Okay, and the reason for that is that I, I have rearranged the groups. If I had just opened the file and uh, saved it again, Illustrator wouldn't touch the coordinates transformations. Things like rotate, scale, skill. The problem is that Unity doesn't actually have a skill property for a game object, and to replicate that, it does require you to use a uh, nested hierarchy of scaling and rotation and that creates uh, multiple problems for deep hierarchies and we didn't want to change your actual hierarchy order so we've decided to support proportional transformations because they translate into linear transformations inside unity uh, both in scale and rotation but we don't support non-proportional transformations this is more like tag talk I know the basic thing to keep in mind is that if you export an art to SVG and you import it using Rage tools and things get out of place, you probably better to simply um, expand the transformations. Make sure that every point has an absolute coordinate. So to do that, you simply select something in the art. Doesn't really matter what, as long as you change its grouping. Um, so that, for instance, if I select this guy and I ungroup it, okay, then I group it again. I'm basically forcing Illustrator to review uh, the transformations that are applied to these shapes. Okay, so uh, since Illustrator doesn't use any complex transform matrices for its data, it automatically freezes this, so it expands these points and they're ready to be read by Rage Tools. So simply by saving them, like I did, they're gonna give you the warning, and then you click yes, and here you go. All right, so if I import um, this guy now in Unity, you see that it automatically sets everything in place. Of course, we have a number of issues here. We're gonna talk that, about that in a second, but just so you know how to do that within Inkscape, um, you can see the same art here. It's very easy. Simply go to File, Inkscape Preferences, and within it, go to the Transform section, and you see the Preserved and Optimize It options for Store Transformations. Simply select Optimize It. Um, very simple to do. All I have to do now is select everything, and you're going to ungroup, which uh, Control Shift G shortcut or you just select the menu you can just do that a number of times you're gonna see that the dotted outline for each uh, group shape or group of shapes will show up so you know that if you hit again now you're seeing the outline for each individual letter so you know that you're changing the way the things are grouped and that's what you want because that's forcing uh, Inkscape to regenerate these coordinates for you after you do that, you can regroup everything uh, to your liking or simply leave it as it is. Now you can uh, simply save as SVG and write your SVG file. Okay, so back into Unity, um, let's check the problems that we got here. So the first thing you realize is that we aren't getting what is generally called hollow shapes or shapes with holes within them. Okay, so why is that? Well, to start with, Rage Spline does not support 
uh, actual holes and one of the reasons for that um, you have better performance when you're not uh, carrying or taking into account these compound shapes which is the technical term for shapes within shapes which are rendered or understood in, an, in a specific way okay so that doesn't help us here because we really need uh, those holes to be carved right so what we're gonna do is simply use a trick we're gonna segment these letters which have holes um, in a way that it's brought in to unity just as a single shape how do we do that depending on your software on your illustration package you're gonna use simple boolean or you may use a specific tool like what we're gonna see now so start with let's check it within illustrator so let me just zoom in to the letters and I start with something simpler like for instance the big Q letter here so I can use this tool which is grouped right next to the razor tool the knife tool um, actually breaks the shape whatever you slice it just how you're seeing here it has created a slice in this shape which makes it more like a C shape okay just how we have seen before the shape should be optimized using last points to define its curvature maybe just uh, one point here uh, I'll just put this one in isolation just uh, let me just quickly select isolation mode so that I don't interfere with other things grouped with it and then I can remove those needless points let's just keep one for each diagonal it's a good rule of thumb let me just finish this off real quick all right um, yeah, I'd probably add one to each diagonal just for consistency's sake. Right, so the shape is perfectly suited for Rage Tools and Rage Spline. The problem here is obviously that the outline is showing in front of the shape. So within Illustrator, you can use the appearance window to simply move the stroke behind the fill. Okay, and that would work things out but as you will see when I bring this into raise tools I have to select the right option to make this work so let me just save it over and import it again okay so we see two problems here first the outline just like we have seen in Illustrator is in front of the shape which is something we don't want and we're getting some uh, ripping which is this problem that happens whenever you have points overlapping okay so let me just get back to the normal view if I select this guy move close to it and I I just disable the handles just make our job easier and I just move this guy up these guys apart from each other making sure they did not overlap so yeah like that and you you can see that the shape ripping is gone so now the problem is that the fill should be in front of the outline so if you want to do that manually inside ray spline you have to go to debug and then you should select this kind of obscure option here called inverse triangle draw order and then you have to refresh its, its drawing so to do that one of the easiest ways is just clicking optimize and disabling it if you don't want to use it so that forces the shape to be redrawn okay but how do we do that automatically well SVG has an option for that simply select the SVG component go to settings and click outline behind fill and then click import and you see that it does work out the problem um, of shapes being drawn in the wrong order right but it won't work out things like the ripping and stuff so you either edit it manually here or if you don't want to use the slice option inside Illustrator and moving the points manually uh, to split them apart 
there's a better option, which I'll show you now. I'll first rejoin these two now unconnected uh, edges. As you can see here, they're definitely not connected. Okay, that, that's what the two does. So to join them again, since they're overlapping, I can simply use the Unite option from the Pathfinder window, and then it's it's back into a single shape. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is simply create either a rectangle tool or you can use the line segment uh, with, this, with a specific width. And let's see how thick is that. Okay, and then you check out if that's what you want as a spreading width for the hole that you're going to cut here. You're going to need to cut. Uh, I'd probably do this a bit smaller, probably something like half a point. And then I just draw it in. And then, since it's just a single line right now, I would expand this guy. So, object, expand, just a stroke. And there you have it, just a, a cutting shape, perfect for what we need. So just select both shapes and click minus front. And there you have it, this, this shape is now properly split and we have the, the right separation that we need to, to prevent the ripping problem within the line. So I just, I'd probably optimize the shape now. Let's remove these guys because like I said, they're way too close. You generally want to avoid this, like the plague. You don't want to crumple up lots of points, which are going to become lots of vertices and increase your density like crazy. So uh, just simplify it like that, and you'll be much better off. Okay, so let's see what that brings us. Just save it again. So you can see that now the, the Q letter is perfectly rendered. and Basically, you would repeat this process for all the other shapes. I'd like to bring to your attention that uh, if you have two holes, like you have here in the B letter, you would have to use two cutting shapes. So you could either use a single shape. If you want to be a bit less precise, you could use the, just the rectangle tool, which is a tad faster. And you just, um, you can get rid of the outline if you want to just see uh, its size, okay, as a cutting shape, and you can uh, simply duplicate it. Control C, Control F to paste in front, move it over. You can uh, rotate it if you want, using shifts to constrain the angle, and then move it to another area if you want to use vertical splits instead of horizontal splits, and perform the minus front operation. Okay, so as bad as the shape looks here, when it gets inside Unity, it's gonna look like that. And although you can see here, it's very, very zoomed in. If you zoom out, even in Illustrator, you won't see it. But especially within Unity with Race Blind, um, you definitely won't see that. And I'll show you why in a second. As you can see here, um, Race spline does expand uh, the, the connecting edges a bit due to the anti and width and uh, just the way it builds the polygons. Okay, so it actually builds polygons outwards from the limiting edges, and uh, so you basically use that to your advantage using this technique, and you can get any carved shape you want uh, relatively easy. Okay, so obviously for the best possible optimization, you could try to uh, take advantage of existing edges, like cut them really close to here and simplifying the shapes. Uh, but this sometimes is just being picky. Okay, most times you can simply use simple lines, simple rectangles like that, and they'll do just fine. Okay, so well, that's it. Just a couple tricks and tips for you guys. Um, to properly prepare your shapes to bring them into Unity using Rage Tools and Rage Spline. Okay, see you in the next video. Have fun!